Welcome to your Veterans Resource Podcast, Return to Roots. This podcast is for service members and their family members regarding retention, transition, and reintegration from active duty to veterans in the community. Hi, I'm your host, Chris Elder, an active duty senior chief in the United States Navy. My partner in crime slash host is Yogi Hernandez, who's an active duty chief in the Navy. Together, we are documenting our experiences as we prepare to transition and reintegrate into the community. Every podcast will have actionable content that will benefit American service members and their families, as well as those who have already transitioned and reintegrated. talking to Overwatch. Their focus is going to be Operation HIT, Career Earls in Transition. Uh, we have with us Daniel Gonzalez and Jackie. They are both part of Overwatch and they're going to be talking to us about an event that's going to be happening here in San Diego, local community. This is a special broadcast from us so that we can advertise what they're going to be doing here March 28th and March 29th. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Daniel and Jackie. Please tell us about what your program is all about. Thank you for having us, first of all. Super excited to be here and talk to you guys about our Heroes in Transition event that is going to be held in San Diego. So this is actually going to be a day first in the industry where we're going to partner with our partners in the data center industry and bring our veterans together. And our goal is to have veterans um, network during this event. And... Our main goal is to introduce them into this industry, what it's capable of, and then potentially walking away with the job offer. Uh, that's our main purpose for this event. We're going to be hosting it in San Diego at the Legacy Resort. Uh, we're inviting Marines and all the Navy community in San Diego, along with veterans that are transitioned out of the military. So it's open to both active duty in our veteran community. Thank you for having us, Chris. Thanks for having us, Yogi. This event's really exciting. Day one, it's going to be lots of golf. We're here in San Diego, so you guys know that the weather is unbeatable. We've got sunshine, we've got veterans, we've got active duty, and we've got multiple branches, not just the Navy. We've got Coast Guard, Air Force, Marines, Army. Everyone's hanging out here. And day two, we've got our, our career fair. So we're really excited to connect our active duty, our veterans, and introduce them to data centers. Um, it's a new and up and coming industry. There's a really big need for people who can learn new skills quickly, stay with the market that's evolving, lead as well as follow. So we're really excited to host this event, be a part of it. To be the first is really cool. I just can't wait to reconnect with all these veterans that we've invited so far and our active duty members that are preparing for when they're getting out. This is open to family, spouses, kids, uh, et cetera, everybody within our veteran community. You know, that's uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because it is also Women's Appreciation Month, right? So yeah. March. And we, we want to make sure that we take the time to say, hey, I know plenty of women golfers that could literally hand me my butt on the golf game. So I hope to see them out there uh, playing golf. What is the benefactor of the golf game? This golf event that we do is actually is going to benefit our nonprofit, our Overwatch Veterans Alliance Foundation. Uh, we actually have partnered with the C4 Foundation. If you guys haven't uh, researched them, I can tell you a little bit. It's basically a foundation out there in San Diego that uh, helps the Navy um, SEAL community and anybody that was part attached into the uh, Navy SEAL community. And it provides mental health services, a place for them to go with their families, go visit, camp, and other resources that is fundamental for, for them when they get back from deployment. Can you tell us more about what exactly is the data center industry? I, I had the same exact question when uh, when I was approached by Overwatch and you know, a little bit about what the data center industry, but a data center to, so to me, and I'm still learning, uh, but to me, a data center is an infrastructure, a building that has network systems, computer systems, network systems, and it's basically a big giant cloud building that it stores data. It communicates data from one building to another, and that's how we communicate in our daily lives. You know, we use it every day with our web browsers, cell phones, technology, military uses it. So it's a big part of our 
of our daily lives, whether we realize it or not. Wow. So what you're telling me is that basically what we call the cloud, this is the data center industry. Am I, am I, did I, did I understand this correctly? Yes, sir. Awesome. And obviously, I mean, it can't just be out there in outer space, right? Or in the satellites or whatever. So it needs to be stored somewhere and digitized and stuff like that. If we already have data centers, why do we need more? Or is this a one and done or is this a growing industry? This is a super growing industry. It's actually one of the fastest growing industries uh, that we haven't realized yet. Some people call it the biggest, smallest industry because of the community that it, um, it's in part with. But basically data centers are built every day uh, wherever cities are growing in population. Uh, even some areas we, we uh, build data centers where they connect one data center to another. So even in some remote locations, but typically you'll find them uh, in, in any area, in a metroplex, city, uh, rural areas, you can find them anywhere being built. So with the golf golf tournament and the hiring event, and I'm also calling it a networking event, yeah. what other uh, networking possibilities are going to be there? And when is when is the golf game? And when is the hiring slash networking event? So the golf is going to be on the first day, which is the 28th. So that's a Tuesday. Um, that's golfing. Our sponsors are going to be there. We're going to have um, hiring teams, hiring managers, representatives from companies who really value hiring veterans and who are either coming all the way out here or taking the time out of their day um, and taking part of their company to donate to these foundations so that veterans, active duty, we all have better quality of lives um, so we can ultimately prevent the veteran suicide rate, you know, any number is too high. So we're always trying to keep that number low. We want to keep our veterans off the streets and we want to make sure that everybody has good job um, opportunities and a good quality of life, has a good income and possibilities ahead of them. So the first day is going to be golf. We're going to have a handful of Navy SEALs, active duty veterans. They're going to be on golf teams with our sponsors and they're going to have really intimate type of interviews where you get to spend the whole day with someone who's the decision maker in this company and kind of have conversations with them about what you can do for them, what they can do for you, and whether you're looking for a job immediately or just networking for your future prospects. That's a really cool opportunity for both the sponsor and the military member. And then day two is the big networking, the more career fair oriented event, have talks from guest speakers. And we're gonna have a women's panel, we're going to have scheduled interviews. Um, some of our registrants have already signed up to have interviews. They're preparing the resumes, um, you know, plotting their outdates, things like that, so that they can really take advantage of the 29th. Um, they secure their job or, you know, start preparing what that job might be for them. I definitely want to encourage our veteran population to attend. We're actually going to have LinkedIn there. They're going to give our veteran community a quick course, things that they could, uh, that could definitely help them, you know, as they transition to put on their LinkedIn. The other thing we're going to, we're working on having a resume professional building service out there to help veterans. The, I think one of the biggest obstacles for veterans when we get out is not knowing how to do a resume, uh, you know, especially if our skills don't translate into the civilian sector. So we're going to have services there that are going to help our veterans with resume writing pointers and skills. So is that just going to be during the time of the event? Or are you also hosting classes in advance for both LinkedIn and for the resume writing? So for the resume writing, uh, Jackie has been doing an incredible job reaching out to the veterans that need help to help them prepare, at least have a resume template that they could bring to the event with them. And, you know, so far we've been helping our registrants as they sign up, you know, one by one kind of working with them because every veteran is different, has different needs and is at different stages of their life and career. So, you know, we're doing our best to, to work with them one-on-one -on -one and, and for the people we can't get to that quickly, we are going to have the classes before to prep and after for those who have more time to continue preparation. How can I register for the golf game and the hiring event? And does it cost anything? Good question. <laughs> you can uh, register on our site. Uh, we've got operationhit.com. And that's got registration for our sponsors, for our veteran and active duties, for our spouses of military members. Um, everyone that needs to get signed up can go through our website. And we've got a form for sign up. If not, you can just email us and get in touch with us. And if you can't get 
signed up, then we can sign you up. For our veterans, just FYI, we have three different career paths. And by the way, we're going to have people hiring on the spot. So definitely want to encourage veterans. You need no experience to attend this event. Uh, so this event's open to all veterans, regardless if you were combat arms, a cook, operations. We definitely want you to come to this event. Uh, we have three different paths that we want to talk to them about. The first one is a project management plan. So for veterans who are interested in transitioning out into the project management world, we have uh, careers for you on the uh, for during our event. The other one that we do have uh, critical facilities. So for our veterans who have done some type of hands-on technical like electrical, plumbing, fixing HVAC systems, Navy nukes, you know, power generation, a aviation mechanics. We definitely want to want you to attend this event because there might be something that you might be interested in. And then the other route that we have lastly is data center technicians for our, our veterans who are transitioning out who want to work with their hands, uh, learn how to use tools, work with fiber, uh, cat six, Rack, rack systems, we definitely have a project, a program for you guys to be a part of. So we have different routes and I definitely, like I, I wanna mention again, uh, again, you don't need no experience to uh, attend our event. I think that's the best part about it. We're gonna teach you the skills and you're gonna talk to people in our industry that are gonna talk to you about their experiences in the data center industry. Uh, you know, just uh, that's why we want you guys to attend. So you mentioned about not requiring any experience, but if you have some experience, do you need to have any licenses associated with it, with them? So that is interesting, Yogi. You know, um, you know, being a veteran myself, you know, when I was looking to transition out, the, uh, you will still have to get some certificates. Okay, it is helpful. You have the hard skills, but. I recommend anybody who's interested, I'll give you a perfect example. If you're gonna go and become a project manager, you might wanna start taking some classes on your PMP, you know, um, Scrum. If, you're, if you want to go the critical facilities route, let's say that you were an electrician in the army, why not use your GI Bill to go for HVAC? Now you have your EPA universal certification where you're a double agent, you know, working in, as an electrician uh, within this data center and also having a second uh, background in HVAC system. So now you're able to work on multiple settings. What makes the veterans, military, and uh, family members such an ideal candidate for these roles? That makes us is that, that we have the soft skills, right? And the skills that we have learned uh, working as a team, you know, project management to me is you have to be able to deliver an outcome by working together as a team. How, how are we gonna achieve this? But communicating with each other, you know, Yogi might have an idea, Yogi might, uh, Jackie might have an idea, and so and so will you. And basically it's just problem solving, communicating, working as a team for a common mission, for a common cause. I think the spouses, veterans, we go through a lot, especially during deployment, you know, and during during that phase, communication is a key, a key weapon for, for, for us to survive. I think that's what makes a veteran you know, other than that, we're team players, we're used to extended hours, you know, and we work together for a common cause. Absolutely. And I think you hit it on the head when you mentioned the spouses, like if they're not military, how can they be qualified for the same slot, but they deal with the same challenges that we do when they have to pick up and move, when they have to look for a new job, when they have to hop back into the civilian job market and make that resume to match the time and year that we're doing and, you know, keep up with their LinkedIn and do all those things. They know exactly what that's like and having to deal with their spouses, you know, command dates and things like that. So working around holidays. So everybody knows how to adapt when you've been in the military in some aspect um, and you know how to learn new skills and you know how to work with new teams and you know how to lead you know how to follow and you know we all have to pass a certain base level you know the ASVAB we all take the ASVAB to to get in the military and your job your rate your MOS it can tell you a lot about what your skills are like and those can transfer um, and even if they don't directly transfer the fact that you learn those skills means that you are able to learn really difficult, rare skills, and you can learn these new and up and coming valuable skills.
just a quick recap before we start jumping on who is Daniel and who is Jackie. The company Overwatch, it is a veteran-owned, veteran-centric organization, correct? One, mm -hmm. The three founders are veterans. They wanted to start on this organization in order to help the veteran community grow. You guys have been online for the last three years and started in Austin. It's become a massive, well-known company in the data center industry that now because of your success you're trying to branch out and be and try to cover as much ground as possible um to, to also include jobs outside of the united states canada mexico and then looking forward to other places am i correct so far correct yogi uh in fact uh something about overwatch uh it was started by the three principals two army veterans both that came from the combat offer, combat uh, world, and then uh, our CEO, Kirk, who came from the, the Navy community uh, in 2019. Well, yeah. last, year, <laughs> last year, we had the opportunity to actually double in size, and we're experiencing uh, growth within our company, which is exciting. Like you said, we had our first hire in Canada, so we are officially in Canada. You know, soon, other parts of the world, we are in Europe as well, so we are always growing. So for our veterans who are interested in traveling, who are not tired of traveling, we have opportunities for you guys um, as well globally if you guys are interested in, in, those, in those aspects. Hey, and we really do appreciate you coming on here and talking about Operation HIT, but let's talk about Danielle and Jackie. <laughs> so, so we'll go with Jackie first. Um, Jackie, I know you are a veteran yourself, and I just want to say thank you for your service. How did you get to where you're at today? Ah, well, I was super happy to serve. So it was my honor. Um, you know, I got, got big shoes to fill when I was in because guys like you stomping around. And uh, I, uh, I came from a small town, South Texas, Brownsville. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I knew a lot of people that got out and went to the army mostly, but my family wouldn't let me. They were like, no, you're a woman, no way. It's not going to happen. You're going to go get shot, you know, overseas, it's just hard no. Um, and then, you know, I went and did my, my own, my own thing. And I went to college and kind of fluttered around and in my mid twenties, you know, I, I really had that same calling again to join the military. And by then my family, you know, I wasn't so young anymore. And they're like, well, if this is something you really want to do, then just go for it. And, you know, since boot camp, that first little photo they see in your dress whites and you've got your little sailor hat on and they're like, look at our, our sailor. So <laughs> they got on board relatively quickly. They got with the program. As a sonar tech, our school's here in San Diego. So I kind of had that in mind when I picked this rate. But um, yeah, I came out here, studied, and unfortunately, I got hurt um, training while we were here at our school. And you know, I went through the limb due process. I went through the med set process and I got out right, right, right about where my four-year contract was just a few weeks shy. Um, cause it's a long process, but I got out pretty early and got to use my GI bill and join the medical community. And that was really cool, but I did have a longing to get back into this military. You know, I missed it. I didn't want to get out of the Navy. I loved the Navy. I had a great experience and I missed the community. So when Overwatch popped up on my radar on LinkedIn and Scott Meyer, he's our director of fit out um, for data centers. So he got in touch with me. We had some mutual connections and he invited me to check out DCAC in Austin, which is coming up uh, still a few months out, uh, but that's definitely gonna be fun. You guys are invited to definitely come. It's a blast. I went last year and didn't even realize what I was walking into. Super fun. It's data center explosion. It's not a stuffy convention. It's a really fun one. And that's how I got to meet Gonzo. I got to meet Daniel and, you know, he talked to me about recruiting and that was it. I mean, I just couldn't stop thinking about the team and the mission and the goal and, you know, myself as my short time as active duty. And then as a veteran, you know, I, I'm not done giving back. I'm not done helping. I'm not done, um, you know, helping my, myself as a, as a veteran to continue learning and then giving back whatever I learned to make sure that the people behind me, you know, don't fall behind. So I'm really honored and uh, really happy to be part of this team. From Brownsville, Texas to San Diego. And <laughs> On the now... border by the sea, not that different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Danielle, where, where did you uh, 
hail from before so i'm actually from southern california uh born and raised in riverside uh out here in the inland empire i was always in in the army similar to jackie i wanted to join the army right after uh high school you know mm -hmm. as a senior but funny story is my older brother served in the army and he was actually deployed while i was a junior and a senior in high school uh he was overseas in, our, in iraq so you could only imagine the conversation when i came to my mom and asked her if i could join the service you know it was what are you thinking yeah no me you right yogi and uh <laughs> so i i you know but i do remember um i don't know if i mentioned to you guys that i remember september 11 i was a sophomore in high school so i have always gravitated towards the military you know, watching movies, you know, always interested in what the, uh, in the military and what our troops do, you know, watching TV. I remember that as a child. So since my parents wouldn't let me join um, the military, you know, I tried the whole college thing, you know, but I wasn't finding fulfillment. I felt lost a little bit, you know, because I, I was pretty competitive back in the day, played sports in high school, you know, et cetera. So I was looking for something and I kind of had it in my head, like, Hey, this is what I want to do. So I finally joined the army in 2006 as an infantryman, and uh, you know I was super excited once I graduated basic training about going to Hawaii. But I was only there for about two months. Got there, and you know I they gave us orders to go to Iraq. Uh, so it was definitely going really fast, you know, uh, the military. So I spent a year out there, met some some guys that I still remember like it was yesterday. Uh, came back to Hawaii, got ready for a second deployment to Iraq, and then uh, came back. Uh, and then I went back for the third time uh, to Afghanistan. I, one of the principals of Overwatch, he was actually my PO, Anthony Garcia. We were deployed in the Kuna province together, actually. It's funny how years later you come back and reunite, you know. But while something happened to me different while I was in Afghanistan, I actually got DA selected by the Army to go become an Army recruiter. So upon return, I was grouchy. No, this is not what I want to do. But I didn't realize how much this would benefit my life and my career years later down the road. Uh, you know, went to Texas, got to experience the West, the West Texas lifestyle. Uh, we actually went to three different maps, San Antonio, Dallas, and Amarillo to take our, our guys enlisted in the Army. And then uh, from there, I made the ultimate sin of converting to becoming a recruiter which again, it benefited me down the road, and which took me to Albany, Oregon. And from there, I got to expand my knowledge on recruiting, you know, helping communities, networking with communities, how to talk to people. Uh, it basically got me away from talking like I was in the infantry, you know, it kind of gave me like a mini reboot, if you could say, uh, you know, uh, talk, uh, being able to approach the civilian population while still in uniform and uh my wife who's also a veteran um during that time she was finishing up her school uh to become a mental health uh, therapist and a family uh, therapist so my oldest son was about to start school so we started thinking about the transition you know um, something that i do remember doing uh because you have to provide for your family was getting on an airplane from portland to do a job interview in California while I was still in the army. So I was one of those that transitioned out on a Friday and started working on a Monday and uh, went and re uh, continued recruiting in the civilian sector for a construction company. And then uh, I started with Overwatch in May of 2022 and the rest has been history. You know, a lot of learning because the data center does throw you some curveballs but it is an exciting industry. And then especially what we do for our veterans, every time that we are able to introduce one veteran to the data center community and offer them a lucrative career, it's one veteran that we don't have to worry about struggling, committing suicide, mental health, all that great stuff. So it's definitely a win-win for everybody, you know? I feel like we definitely make a big difference in our veteran community when we're able to do that. I can attest to that from my personal experience. Right now I'm in the middle of transition. And there's so many people out there that are interested in trying to hire you and what do they call it? Navigating sea of goodwill. And there's some people that are predatory and there's some that are not. And it's just insane the amount of people that really want to help you, but the people that would just want to take advantage of your benefits, right? So exactly. even with that being said, it is daunting to know and be able to have enough energy to be able to decipher who is who and whether or not you are predatory or not. But 
just learning who you are as a company has been really amazing. You know, just from going through what I would call a crisis of not knowing of where I was supposed to be at in life because I was supposed to retire in Japan. Mm-hmm. Now I'm here in San Diego. I have no one. And then, you know, going forward. But then I, Tim Kearns, uh, Tim Kearns and I are in a TAPS class together. And he tells me about this wonderful opportunity that sounds like unicorns and rainbows, right? <laughs> and I was like, this is just too good to be true, right? Just, I can't believe this. And he's like, well, I know the CEO. I'll call him on the phone right now. And in my mind, I was like, man, he's just talking to this other dude that, you know, he got paid to come and recruit us and whatever. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And then after afterwards, I met Tim and we kept in contact. And then after that, I met Jesse and David. And since that day going forward, there has been no strings attached. The, the, the thing that they told me is like, hey, we cannot promise you anything on top of the fact that you are your timeline of transitioning is completely unknown. Right. But we're going to be here for you. And everyone says that everyone says that, but very few people actually mean it. And, you know, just conversations, guidance, everything. It has been there without any strings attached. So I truly appreciate what your organization, what the amount of help that you give to the community. I've seen you do classes at the different bases and talk and interact with all of the from Airman Timmy, who is hurt in the Limdu category, all the way to commanding officers. And there's a saying, right? The way that you treat the janitor is should be the same way that you treat the CEO of a company. You live up to that standard. And I, I personally appreciate that because it's not just cartelling to someone that has the rank, the authority, or whatever it is, right? And especially to me right now that I'm personally going through the Limdu process, it is straight down to my heart to know that there's an organization out there that not only cares for you as a person, but also cares and wants to help you be successful regardless of whether it is to... The successful to the organization or not, you just want to help them from the bottom of your hearts. So thank you. Uh, I know know that there's a lot other people that have seen you and interacted with you that will say that too. No, thank you, uh, Yogi. And I definitely, it's, it's, it's easy to do what we do and we enjoy what we do, you know, I'm talking for myself and I see the same fire in Jackie, you know, when she talks in front of our veterans and no, you brought up a great point. And again, that's why we want to cater to every veteran out there. It doesn't matter what your rank is. If you only did three years out there, if you're retiring, I do feel like there's something for you to do within the data center vertical. If you're willing to give us a try or at least come to our event, network with people, and definitely hear about the great opportunities that we have to offer because we are uh, nationwide, internationally, and there might be a place for you back home if you're going back to Texas, Chicago, uh, all parts of the United States. I'm so glad that you guys came on here. And, you know, I've, I've gotten to know you at a couple of different events. We attended a reboot class together. We mm-hmm. really got to know each other's inner why. Well, and yeah. uh, if anybody wants to know their inner why, just hit me up later on. <laughs> hey, never kill like, Yogi. No. <laughs> never kill Yogi. Yeah, no. Yogi. Yogi doesn't know. Me and us three, we're <laughs> we're the three amigos. Yogi's the one out. So wow, I, <laughs> wow. Yo, man, you shouldn't have left in the middle of the class, man. You know, uh, <laughs> you know I had a medical appointment in the middle of the class. Okay. <laughs> so. I, I, I want to kind of reiterate something, you know, Operation HIT is addressing an issue that's happening in the mm-hmm. data center industry. There's about 250,000 job shortages projected by year 2025. And I'm pretty sure that's actually uh, not projected correctly because our world is revolving around these little machines 
these little machines, you know, even though we've got the countdown going on here on my phone, you know, we, <laughs> just like the countdown that's happening, we have a countdown to where we're going to have a point where we're not going to be able to operate because we don't have enough people in the data industry. So Operation HIT is addressing that issue. So about 250,000 shortages just in the U.S. market alone. And in the next couple of years, there's going to be about 200,000 per year, 400,000 service members that are looking for a job. So Operation HIT is a great organization. I know we didn't really speak all the way into the skill bridge side, but they are supporting methods to the skill bridge. We need to ask these questions from this organization. They have so many great things going on. It's not just a golf game. It's not just a hiring event. Like, like you said earlier, it's a networking event. You're going to have nonprofit organizations that are, want to help you out and also want to uh, pretty much get to know you and help guide you. You have LinkedIn going to be there. Come on. Like you uh -huh. get LinkedIn. Like you're going to get some incredible resources by having LinkedIn there. The resume writing and also talking to CEOs who actually just want to come hang out with you. Veterans, anybody with the DD-214, they want to talk to you. They want to have you in their company. And Operation HIT is going to make that a smooth transition for you. I guarantee you they are going to have your best interests at heart. I really hope that you guys actually take a look at this golf course, uh, a golf game, because it's actually going to be a good deal for you. One, you get to play free golf. Two, I'm sure there's free food. And you can count me in yeah. whenever there's free food. <laughs> so I, I really hope to see you guys there. Um, I, I'm sorry. I just kind of went off on a tangent, man. Someone take my little, my little flag staff away from me. Take the mic. Take the mic. Okay. <laughs> and, I, and I promise it's not going to feel like you're doing a job interview. It's definitely a networking event with people who think like we do. Uh, and they just want to give back to the community. So uh, definitely, I'm going to keep saying it. I definitely want to encourage every veteran who is looking for, for a purpose in life, uh, you know, definitely come in uh, to this event because you might get something. And if it's not today, tomorrow, maybe six months from now, you know, you, you'll remember us and you'll reach out to us. That's why, uh, real briefly, I want to talk about our VITA program. It stands for Overwatch Veterans in Transition Apprenticeship. Uh, that is an excellent program. And I have seen the great results that this has done uh, where we have taken a veteran. And again, they'll ask me, what experience do I need? We just, we're looking for the veteran that is hungry, humble, and smart. You know, uh, we want to bring you into this industry. And as long as you're willing to learn, uh, we'll start you as a project coordinator, as a project um, assistant manager. And our goal is three to five years from now, you're a project manager mentoring the next wave of veterans that are coming into our company. And that's another thing that we're super excited about our growth because the bigger we grow, the more veterans we could bring into Overwatch. And uh, veteran uh, Overwatch, I truly believe that uh, the chemistry that we have is similar to the veteran community, you know, the same passion that we bring every day. So uh, super excited about that, but, you know, definitely want to uh, bring our veterans out. So just to do a quick recap, you're going to be having food from Rotisserie Affair. You're going to have strategic partnerships, San Diego Veterans Coalition, Reboot, Overwatch, many others that are going to be there that are part of this whole organization to take the San Diego Veterans Coalition worldwide to be able to help every veteran across to reduce the number of suicides, homelessness, and incarceration at the root before it even happens. Day one is going to be golfing events. Day two is going to be networking, veterans focus, having a women's panel, industry experts that are going to be coming there to teach. Any last round alibis and stuff like that before we go into the round? You know, these two days coming up are really special in San Diego. We want every available active duty um that's, you know, able to make it to come. We want every available veteran in the hundred mile radius to come. We want anyone who, you know, can't make it, but wants the information to get in touch with us. Um, I mean, even if you're 10 years into your 20 year plan, you've got junior sailors that are looking up to you, you know, junior military members that are going to need your help and they're going to need advice. And, and you can be the one to point them in the right direction and, and you know also help it's a ripple effect a community so um we want you know everyone to come out here if you gotta you got 
got to bring a friend, bring a friend, you know, if, if they're your ride, you need a ride, you need something to wear. There's resources, there's closets mm-hmm. that provide clothes. Um, you can wear your service uniform or you can, you know, give it a shot doing business casual. Um, you know, we're really creative when it comes to solutions. We're comprised of veterans, of veteran spouses, of military supportive people, and we just want to get it done. We want to get our clients, the best veterans placed into jobs that pay well and value their employees. And we want our military members to have good opportunities waiting for them when they cross that border. And if they want to be out on a Friday and in on a Monday like Daniel, then you know we want to do our absolute best to get them there, however that looks like. Um, whether it's a day of golf, whether it's a hiring fair, both, um, you know, or if there's something else that we can help you with, you just got to reach out to us. We've got lots of ways for everyone to get involved. And even if you just want to volunteer, you know, we like volunteers too, to help set up and break down and just kind of network and kind of hang out from the outside and absorb it in first. I get that. If you want to be a wallflower, you know, we need, we need all hands on deck for this. It's, it's a really good cause. We've got the community coming together um and it's free so the more the merrier no yeah excellent points jackie and then um you know through our vita program we have programs designed specifically for our female veterans so in honor of, of women's in our industry so definitely want to encourage everybody definitely come out it's going to be a great time and we cannot be more excited to have you guys join our event this round we are going to talk about things like what is your favorite book or podcast <laughs> That you're gonna ask my favorite flavor of M&M or something. <laughs> pause for a dramatic effect. Trick yeah. question, they all taste the same. Um, <laughs> uh, the I love podcasts. <laughs> I, I love podcasts. When you guys asked if if I'd come on here with Daniel, I was just jazzed inside because it's definitely something that I use in my life as a tool. I know that sometimes, you know, We can work, 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 and it's hard to find time to invest back in ourselves. So podcast, boom. Um, My favorite one is probably, it's called Coaching for Leaders. It's by Dave Stachowiak, and he has Fortune 500 um, CEOs, you know, really big names on there, people that coach CEOs, people that train Fortune 500 company teams. Um, military members, members of government, people go on there and give their advice on how they, how they constantly learn, how they lead members under them, um, tricks and advice. And that kind of stuff just really keeps it fresh in my brain because it's not the kind of stuff you learn just once and it's in. You um, have to keep relearning that kind of stuff and make it a habit. So I love coaching for leaders. I also love Negotiate Anything um, by Christian Kwame and our very own Data Center Revolution. We've got uh, our CEO, Kurt Kofel, and a lot of our team members, a lot of military members. You get to hear some uh, old old deployment stories, boot camp stories, um, how they went overseas together stories, a lot of allegedly this happened stories <laughs> at the Data Center guests. So for me, I love podcasts. Ask me anytime. I've got a whole list full, but definitely pick some and and listen to some that work for you because they changed my life. One of my favorite ones that I like to listen to is actually a Navy veteran um, or Navy SEAL. You guys know him, um, Jocko, uh, Extreme Ownership. His book is definitely one of my favorites, especially when you talk about the roles of combat, how you apply those skills that you learn in the battlefield and take those skills and apply them into the civilian sector, you know, teamwork, team building. You know, I always, one of my favorite ones is when he talks about detachment, you know, take yourself out of the situation and look at the whole 360 picture because, you know, sometimes we get tunnel vision when we're talking, when we're focusing on a project. And if you detach, you might have some guy that's able to help you or one of your colleagues that's able to help you. And by working as a team, you guys could, uh, you know, f- work together to to reach that common goal and and um, execute. Uh, he's one of my my favorite ones. Also, uh, our CEO, the DCAC podcast. I definitely enjoy listening to the ones where, you know, we actually had Tim Kearns, another one, Jesse Kendrick. And one of my favorite ones too was when we had three veterans that were actually deployed together. And uh, now all three of them work in the data center industry. You know, so how amazing is that when you have veterans deploying together and, you know, years down the road, they're in the same industry working for the same company. Those are amazing stories that you don't hear 
at too many companies, but definitely Overwatch, we have those kind of stories um, in our in our tribe. You definitely listed off some great podcasts there. The uh, uh, Coaching for Leaders is actually really good. And the podcast that your uh, Overwatch company does as well is actually really awesome. I I've listened to a couple of episodes and the way that they go about doing things is pretty cool. I, I really like the relaxed nature that they have in yeah. there. They have a lot of good different uh, people and personalities coming in there with their different takes on things. So definitely some good recommendations. Jocko's book, Jocko is just, he's, he's an amazing human being. So uh, that could definitely talk talk about some different perspectives um, that a lot of people probably need in their life. So great, mm -hmm. great books, man. Great. If you could go back to before you joined the Navy, so it's going to be a two twofold question. If you could go back to before you joined the Navy, what advice would you give yourself? And then what advice would you give yourself before you transition back out into the civilian life? Ooh, good question. Um, well, I mean, my case personally, since I joined later in life, my advice would have been to join sooner. Um, and that's to say to do the hard work first. I don't think that I realized I would still have so much, like you can't gauge how much life is ahead of you when you're so young at 18, 19, 20, and you just want to do it all as soon as possible. So I would have say, you know, take a chill. Don't, don't go to Bali and Hawaii so much and maybe uh, <laughs> invest a little bit stronger, but, but I, I'm glad that I ended up in the military anyway. And, you know, um, I had a great time uh, and getting out, gosh, there's so much advice I wish I could have given myself because transitioning out is really hard, especially as a med sep. Um, there's a lot going on and, um, you know, that's a whole nother podcast, I think, uh, that we should probably have. But I think that I would tell myself to swallow my pride and, and ask for more help. Because I think it was very intimidating. Because um, part of the transition is how do I talk to civilians? And this guy's in a really fancy suit. So how do I address him? And, you know, you're still trying to get this chain of command out of your head and, and shake off things like that. So I think I would have told myself, like, swallow your pride and, and ask that guy for his card and call his office and make him help you with, you know, whatever it is that he's offering that I need help with. Or, you know, let that woman, you know, take you in her office and tell you about the program that she has. Because when I went out, I mean, I was like Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, I was just at that DD-214 and I went and got it and ran and, you know, enrolled in school and didn't want to look back. And here I am. <laughs> So I would have, you know, told myself to take it a little bit more seriously and, 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 you know, at the end of the day, you're the only one who benefits from all that, you know, so that, that would be mine. So for the record, I want to make it official. Jackie just invited herself back into the podcast. So there's no take backs <laughs> on this. It is on record. So we're going to go, gonna go ahead and, and I'm going to go ahead and witness the... this. I'm witnessing that she did say it. And we're going to have to bring her back on uh, and also be kind of give her her testimony. So she volunteered. We got it. We got it on record. I like it. Gosh, you got me. <laughs> I'm happy to do it, though. That's another subject I'm passionate about. You know, the medical separation are, are my, my special, you know, I, I hold their hand a little tighter because I know that it's a lot more than just getting out. So happy to do it. All right, Daniel, so over to you. We wanna hear about what advice would you give yourself before you join the military as an 18 year old, 17 year old, if you joined that early. And then as you were transitioning out from the perspective of you being a dual military household. No, great question, great, great question, uh, Yogi. Uh, you know, one thing that I would tell myself was just live your best adventure, you know. Um, I learned so many skills from the Army, you know, great experiences. Uh, you know, I met a lot of people. So another thing that I learned while being in the Army was just talking to people from different cultures, you know, myself being a California kid, serving in the Army with people from Alabama, all walks of life, you know. Uh, something that I w wish I could have done better was keep in touch with my guys, you know, uh, as people transition into another uh, duty station. 
just making sure that I keep um, keep in touch with my guys because uh, I recently started connecting with some of my buddies that I actually deployed three times with, you know, or once with, you know, and it was actually my wife who uh, through her Facebook because my Facebook wasn't active. Uh, they will reach out to us and, uh, you know, something that was amazing during my last uh, visit to St. Louis, uh, I had lunch with my medic, uh, Doc Green, and we connected 10 years later without saying a word to each other like it was just yesterday, you know, so that that brotherhood, that sisterhood, I wish I could have just kept it going because uh, it's it's amazing when you get to connect with your fellow veterans and you see the amazing things that you're that they're doing like for example he's a firefighter out there now uh you know so uh definitely i, I would tell myself keep in touch with people don't be a uh casper and disappear you know make sure you're keeping up with your with your comrades and what i would have told myself getting out the military actually would have been take care of yourself you know i remember trying to recruit and i was getting out within 60 days and people were telling me like, hey dude, when are you gonna start uh, figuring out what you're gonna do? You know, the army's still gonna be here. And that's one recommendation that I would recommend to every veteran gay now, uh, make sure you use your resources, use your time to take care of yourself as you transition now, because when you get out, nobody's gonna take care of you like you, like you are and your spouse, you know? Uh, and so for my wife too, you know, um, I was still in the army, so I, you know, it's a great question because I never asked her what her transition was like, you know, when she was getting out the army. I know I'm a bad husband, right? But <laughs> I thought she was living the life in Hawaii, going to school while I'm in the army still. Uh, her, she was actually using her GI Bill, going to school, uh, you know, but uh, those are great days that we got to spend together uh, before we had kids. Uh, no, so that's on my to-do list now is ask her how her transition was, you know? <laughs> Don't look at me, Jackie. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but yeah, so that's something, uh, if I could give any advice. That's great advice, actually. You know, you guys are pretty insightful, and I really want to kind of recapture two sentences. Um, Jackie, you said, take it serious. Take, take your transition from the military to getting out there serious. It's, it's yours. And the only person that's actually going to give two cents towards it is yourself. So take, take it serious and then keep in touch with people. You know, that's, that's kind of, kind of the two uh, really important things that I pulled from that. And I appreciate you guys sharing your stories there, how our audience can get a hold of you. So uh, Jackie, uh, shoot out your information, then Daniel, shoot out your information, brother. Absolutely. So you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, you'll see Jacqueline Albright Acevedo. Um, you can also find me on our site. Um, you know, if you go to our Overwatch LinkedIn, I'm listed under jobs there. You can email me, jacevedo at weareoverwatch.com. Um, I mean, any way you, you want to get a hold of me, you totally can. I want to hear from you. If you're listening and you've got questions or ideas or concerns or, you know, anything coming up, I, I want to hear from you and let's get connected and see how we can help each other, especially if it involves helping veterans. So, yeah. So uh, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn, you know, Daniel Gonzalez. Uh, with the Oscar logo, the Overwatch logo, you'll you'll find me there pretty easily. Uh, if you send me a message, I'll get back to you. My email, um, in case you would like to get connected, is gonzo, G-O-N-Z-O, at weareoverwatch.com. Uh, you know, and uh, I will respond to you. Uh, something that I would like to mention to you guys, we're actively right now in uh, the San Diego area. So, you know, we're going to be visiting Coronado, Point Loma, um, Camp Pendleton, we have scheduled meetings there every Friday, and we're also going to be doing a career fair out there on the 23rd. So for any Marines out there um, that want to connect with us, you are definitely invited to come and talk to us, uh, you know, because as we continue to grow, we're looking for ambassadors to add to our team as well. So definitely want to welcome you, uh, even if it's an ambassador to our, to our tribe. Well, Overwatch team, we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts uh, for coming to the show, putting all these uh, programs and opportunities 
into our sites for everyone to be a part of you. Yeah. Hey, thank, thanks guys for coming on here. And for all of our listeners, uh, please take a look at Operation HIT. That's uh, We Are Overwatch. They are a great organization. We can connect them and help and help uh, get people into these data center jobs. And, they, and Overwatch doesn't just do data centers. So we could dig really deep into this, but we only hit the tip of the iceberg. This organization has a lot more stuff to it. So I hope to see you guys out there on the 28th and the 29th. You don't even have to bring golf clubs. They got you covered. So with that all said, it is not all rainbows and unicorns. So get out there and take charge of your transition. Yes. Return to Roots out. Do us a solid. Share this content with everyone you know, regardless if they're associated with the military or not. This content will help someone you know and hopefully will lessen the deadly gap after service. Our goal is to do whatever we can to reduce the number of suicides from 22 to 0 within the community. Give us a 5 star review, follow, like, and subscribe. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, TikTok, and you can follow us on LinkedIn and Instagram for more content from our guests. These are our personal experiences and we do not represent the views of the United States Navy and or the Department of Defense. Your transition is ultimately up to you. Please do your research and ask questions. Use Master Chief Google or ask a friend and network within the community that you belong to. Return to Roots out.